Ever have that one employee that just had to get to the sergeant's office or the lieutenant's office? It just ate them alive to have to be at their dorm or on post or in their pod and not be in there with the supervisors. Well, lately I've seen on a couple of correction sites where officers have actually posted, hey, do you have favoritism in your jail or prison? How is it affecting your crew or your staff's morale? Hello, I'm Gary York, True Prison Stories. Thank you for watching this YouTube channel, and if you like this video, please subscribe. I thought it might be a good topic to discuss because we've all seen it. I've worked in the prison system. Prior to that was military. I've worked in the prison system. I've worked in the jail system, and we've all seen it. And it does affect morale. Favoritism is a huge morale buster. And I blame it not on the people or the officers or the front line that are going into the sergeant's or lieutenant's office and hanging out there while the other staff are working. I blame it on the supervisors. The supervisors need to tell those officers, you need to finish your business. Do you need anything? Do you have a question? All right, go back to your dorm, go back to your pod, go back to your assigned post. And um, when, when I was in the Army, for example, we had a platoon office, a platoon sergeant's office. There was a platoon sergeant and then some sergeants had some side areas. And, you know, I would be asked, York, are you done? Did you get what you need? Yes, sir. All right, get back to the motor pool. Today's motor pool day. Get back over there and get those vehicles lined up for inspection and so forth. Don't hang out in the platoon sergeant's office. And then I got out of the military and went to the state prison system in Florida and I was assigned my dorms and, and I went up to the sergeant's office and I know I turned something in and then there was some coffee and I went and got some coffee and they looked at me and said, York, you done? Yes, I'm done. Okay, this is the sergeant's office. Very limited time in here. We need you out on the dorms. That's where we have you assigned. And I said, yes, sir. And I left. Well, what happened to those days? Where have they gone? I was trained that way in the military and my first assignment in the state prison. But it seems as time goes on, we find a lot of people are hanging out in the sergeant's office, hanging out in the lieutenant's office, sometimes more than one. Sometimes it's a certain little group. And all the other officers see this. They watch this. They know. Listen, I know supervisors, you say, I have certain staff that I can only rely on to get this job done. Well, pooey on that. Let's get everybody on the same boat. Let's train everybody. Let's have everybody take their turn doing the job that this certain person or this certain little group can do. You, we can train. We can cross-train. We can get everybody on board because officers see this and they, they begin to realize that certain officers get choice assignments only and they don't. You want to call it jealousy? Call it jealousy. That's fine. Use whatever excuse you want to use. But it is a morale buster. Treat everybody the same. And tell them, are you done with your business here in the sergeant's office? Let's move out. You know, it really starts to be a morale buster when you have 14 to 15 staff members complaining. I had that many staff members complain to me because they knew that I had been in the military and went up in rank. They knew I'd been in Department of Corrections and went up in rank. And then I went to a certain uh, jail system and, and I went to Master Deputy, but I had no intention of going any further because I was getting ready to retire. And they said, hey, you're short, you're short. Can you go report this? This is terrible. They're hanging out. There's certain few people in the sergeant's office um, every day. And, you know, the sergeant would say, well, they, they have special assignments. Okay, special assignments, because they're special or what? You know, that's the way it appears. You know, perception. Okay, maybe maybe everything's fine, maybe it's not. But the perception, your, your, your morale of your troops is going to go down if it is perceived, and I'll give you the benefit of the doubt, and we'll say it is perceived they're receiving favoritism. And that will knock the morale down. We must treat all... Troops, we must treat all front line, we must treat all officers equally. Yes, you have some with certain talents. Maybe they're better at IT and inputting things. Yes, give them that job. 
and move them to the side and let them do it. But don't let them hang out after that with you the rest of the day. Send them back to the dorm or the pod or to an assignment. Or don't let them eat lunch with you every day. The same people eating lunch with a sergeant. There's two or three. It, it's just the perception is bad. And, uh, and it just is a huge morale buster. And folks, now let's don't sugarcoat. Let me go ahead and offend some people some more. We know that sometimes it really is favoritism. We know that there's things going on beyond what's happening. We know that sometimes the door closes in that sergeant's office. What's going on? Why is that person in there? Why is that person, after the shift is done, hanging out with the sergeant still? Why, why, why don't they just get in their car and go somewhere, you know? There's a lot of things uh, you can read between the lines and understand what I'm saying that the perception is very bad. And a lot of people say it's okay to hang out after work. Well, fine, hang out after work. We don't care. Just keep the work duty hours professional, evenly broke down, and fair and consistent. Firm, fair, and consistent, just like you would do with the inmates. I mean, come on. If you're a supervisor, there's nothing worse than getting to perception and the word is out there behind your back. Look at it. Look, look at them. Look what they're doing. Look what they're doing. It's just not good business. Come to work. Your sergeant's office is yours. Your lieutenant's office is yours. Come in. Ask questions. Pick up your paperwork. Turn in your reports. Sit down. Let's do your annual appraisal. There's all kinds of duty functions that go on in the sergeant's or lieutenant's office. But after that, get back to work. See ya. I got work to do. I'm a sergeant. I can't sit here and chat with you all day. I need to work. If you have people sitting in your office chatting with you throughout the day, and especially the same ones day after day after day, apparently you haven't got enough work to do as a supervisor. Maybe we need to assign you some more work to keep you busy. So you don't have time to talk to these people and discuss your fantasy football and, and do your fantasy football program um, while you're supposed to be conducting your sergeant duties and lieutenant duties. See, all these things kick into place. And then when an officer does something wrong, you have to go out as a supervisor and you have to discipline these people. And they're looking at you like, in their mind thinking, you're going to discipline me for this? When all week long, every month, all year long, this is what's going on in your sergeant's office, in your lieutenant's office? Perception, folks, it's a killer. Favoritism, it's a killer. It's a huge morale buster. You can twist it, turn it, any way you want. Just keep it clean. Sergeant's office is for your work, for you, the sergeant. Lieutenant's office is for your work, you, the lieutenant, or the captain, in cases of prisons. In jails, mostly it's lieutenants that are shift supervisors and sergeants running the shift. And in, in prisons here in Florida, at least, it's captains running the shift. And then you'll have a lieutenant and sergeant. So, you know, think about it. Uh, it's popping up more and more on social media on the correction sites. I've seen it twice in the last two weeks, two different people, two different sites. Hey, you guys have all this favoritism going on at your place? And a lot of people are saying it's happening. So maybe we need to shape up in those uh, supervisor's offices and stop giving the perception. In one certain case that I was asked to uh, go across the street and report, and by the way, don't report anything for anybody. Go as a group. If you have to report something, go as a group. Fifteen people would have been a lot better than just me. I reported something. One little item was taken care of. Uh, they had more of the attitude of snitches get stitches. So go as a group, and believe me, your higher-ranking management will take a closer look when you have 14 or 15 people going uh, across the street to talk to uh, people about this. It is a big morale buster. I, I did it because I didn't have much time left, and I knew it was going on. I knew what was happening. I won't discuss the details. That wouldn't be fair because an allegation has to be proven. So we'll just use the word perception right now. The perception was out there that a lot of bad things were going on in the sergeant's office. But management didn't really want to hear it. They don't like that stuff, some of them. Some of them. Good management will take heed and check it out and interview everybody and try to see what's going on and fix it. And the only reason I brought this topic up today is because I've seen it. 
and um, it's not good and it needs to be handled professionally and uh, upper management needs to make sure their lieutenants and their sergeants are doing their work and not showing favoritism and having fun all day with certain staff members. It is a huge morale buster when you're in the dorm all day or in the pod all day, day after day, seven days a week, and that's what it seems like nowadays with mandatory overtime, and certain people are just getting a, a nice gig and skating right on through while you're dealing with the fights, the spit, the throw up, the nastiness in the dorms and all that stuff. Anyway, I've done enough damage today. Hopefully I didn't offend too many people. Thank you. Gary York, True Prison Stories, please subscribe.